Hi, I'm Tavi Gevinson, and this is a Q&A for Sorjo Magazine, for and by the unconventional. Thank you for sending in these questions. Okay, Constant Finding asked, what was the hardest thing about ending Rookie? Ending Rookie was not as hard as trying to keep Rookie alive. Like that was the hardest part about the whole thing, was trying to find funding, um, trying to sell it, trying to do those things without feeling like I was compromising the integrity of the publication or gonna make my life miserable. So that was the hardest part. Once the decision to end it was actually made, it was very painful and it was a, a change and I felt bad about the other people that decision impacted. But the good news is that ending it really was a positive thing in the end and more positive than keeping it going in a way that would have been painful. Paris Girl 211 said, I was wondering how you find control, discipline, and or self-awareness when negativity, doubt, and or debilitating procrastination creep in. Amazing question. Let me know if you find out. Um, no, I have a few thoughts on this. So, uh, first of all, thinking of negativity, doubt as bad, off limits, don't go there, gives it all a lot of power and makes me think about those things more. So I try to remember that thoughts and feelings are passing. They don't uh, impact my personal safety, my well-being. They don't, you know, threaten me. They're just thoughts and feelings. Nothing in the real physical world is changing when I have those thoughts. So letting them in, looking at them, that kind of lets them run their course. Like the good thing about negative thoughts is that they're really boring. So at this point, whenever my, you know, one of five repetitive negative thought loops I've had for years comes on, I'm like, oh, you again. It doesn't seem like the truth anymore. It's just a, a kind of function of my brain, usually a result of poor mental health. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Shouldn't be. Yeah, so these thoughts are boring and thinking of them as boring also makes them less powerful. If they're like bad for me, then I want to think about them. Um, but they're boring. They follow the same narrative and uh, it helps me to just go, oh, I know where this is going. This is a dead end. What's more interesting is what could happen if I don't go there, especially if it comes up, you know, if it's related to writing and creating, that's the unknown. That's more interesting. That's way more interesting than doubt. Doubt is a dead end. So to kind of become aware of these in the moment, I recognize the, I've had them a lot now. So I'm like, okay, that's going on. And I tell myself, put a floor beneath you. I might wiggle my toes or wiggle my butt um, <laughs> to remind myself of the physical world, do a breathing exercise smell a, a scent of some kind, whatever reminds me that those are just thoughts, this is the physical world, and you can move on, and you don't need to solve them. You can't think your way out of a thought prison, they say. You can just move on. The song Move On uh, from the musical Sunday in the Park with George has a lot of wisdom about creativity and moving on. I, so I actually listen to that song a lot, and I repeat to myself a line from it, which goes, anything you do, let it come from you, then it will be new, move on. Also, journaling slows down your mind because you can only think as quickly as you're writing and then a lot of your thoughts, you'll see how silly they are. And you'll, you'll also see how silly they are if you talk through them to some. If you actually follow them through to the worst case scenario or whatever you're afraid of, you'll find that it's probably not that bad. Like you're not gonna die or get sick and nothing's gonna happen to anyone you love, you'll just, write something you don't like very much or whatever, that's fine, you can live with that. And the one other thing I'll say about negativity, doubt, and debilitating procrastination is that they can give really good information. There's a book called The War of Art, which is really cheesy, and he floats some weird ideas. <laughs> 
thinking specifically of when he's like, if Hitler had been a better painter, maybe he wouldn't have committed mass genocide. And you're like, I don't think that's how that works. But if you can look past that stuff, this book is really helpful in that it's just very practical. It's about writing and art as tasks. It's very demystifying. And one of the things he says, the author, is uh, that the project you're procrastinating on the most is the one you need to do the most. That's why it means that much to you. Otherwise, it wouldn't carry all this weight. So procrastination can be really good information. So can negativity and doubt. Uh, maybe there's something you need to talk to your friend about if you're dwelling on something that has to do with them. Maybe it's something you need to work out on your own in a journal or with your therapist. Um, so I wouldn't be too hard on yourself about negativity, doubt, etc. And if you can look at them with curiosity and be like, oh, what is this telling me about whatever shit I need to process, um, then it's good information. Catherine Hutch asked, can you tell me a bit about any rituals you have around your art making slash creative practice? I'm always curious to hear other makers' routines and systems that keep them accountable. Well, since being isolated, um, my friend and I have been FaceTiming while we write. It has helped make us both feel like we're reporting to someone and someone's watching us so we can't um, click around on the internet or whatever. Uh, it's less lonely. It helps with scheduling. I also do morning pages, which is from another artist book called The Artist's Way that I haven't read. Morning pages are basically just journaling before you work to sort of empty your brain. Lizzie Donahue asked, what advice do you have for writers who are finding their personal style slash voice? Pay attention to the writers that you like and copy their work down word for word if there's like a passage that you like because I think that helps I think it seeps into your brain somehow but I also think it it's it helps see how they did what they did you're kind of taking apart their words and putting them back together uh it's also kind of comforting to do that for some reason to just copy down people's words mindlessly and also write as often as you can you're not gonna sit down and write a book all at once. You're not gonna suddenly adapt a practice of writing for 10 hours a day. Just start small. An hour a day is better than nothing. Even writing on your phone. I write a lot on my phone and it helps because it kind of feels like I'm texting. So it my guard is down. I can trick myself into doing a lot of writing that way. And then that way, whenever I sit down at my computer next, I already have something to work from. So um, even writing a few sentences in your phone, just getting started that way if it feels less daunting. But you just want it to feel like a, a task. The other thing I'll say is that kind of regularity is more important than producing something great. You wanna take off the pressure that every time you do it, it has to have great results. That's not gonna happen. It doesn't work that way for anyone. The point is just to do it often enough, even when you don't feel like it. Because if you're waiting for like the muse, that's not gonna happen. Usually once you get started, it gets easier and it becomes fun or the muse comes in or whatever, but just to not be precious about it. It's just a task. Um, it helps me to think about doing a play. With a play, you have to do it at the same time every night. You don't get to decide whether you're feeling it or not. Um, I guess that's like any job, <laughs> any, um, you know, yeah. But there you go. Photosynthesis91 asked, if your life was a movie, what genre would it be? Who would play you? Who would direct it? What genre would the soundtrack be? All right, I'm gonna throw out a mishmash. The late um, Satoshi Kon, I love his movies, Perfect Blue and Millennium Actress. The internet looks really cool in Perfect Blue. I would also be very happy with Nancy Myers, but starring Cole Escola as me. I don't know, that's it. That's, yeah, I'd be happy with that, but also I have no idea what that movie is. Jerry C. Ann asked, 
Do you think younger generations have more of an advantage creatively since they have access to so much content? Or do the platforms themselves and the sheer amount of content we consume constitute more of a threat to creativity? I think it all depends on how you use it. And I think access is great. And, you know, is this good? Is all of this good or bad is hard to say. But the thing we do know is that um, this is the reality, you know, Instagram uh, or what, uh, whatever forms of social media artists use to get their work out there or to get inspired. I think it's just about how you use it. So as long as you pay attention to what feels good and what you want to opt out of, that's kind of all you can control anyways. Um, Susan Moore 24601 asked, what's the best book you've read recently? Right now I'm reading a book called A Primer for Forgetting by Lewis Hyde and I'm really enjoying it and for some reason it's very comforting right now I think because it is good perspective. It's about history, it's about big ideas, but he also makes them feel kind of small and personal um, and it's about the way that forgetting and memory are used in different cultures the way that they're valued by different people, both in terms of something that feels huge, like history, but also the self and your own memories. And a lot of it is related to uh, creativity as well, which feels related to all these questions. So I would recommend it. Kindlefly asked, what are you most excited for about the Gossip Girl reboot? Really just the fact that if we're shooting Gossip Girl, that means that the world is somewhat back to normal. Um, but also everything that the writers and producers and showrunner have planned for it that I'm aware of is all really fun. Um, you know, it takes place now. Same world, but different characters. So the way that they've updated Gossip Girl to feel like something that would happen now um, in today's climate are all really fun and exciting to me. Upuyar asked, how are you dealing with all this change? What keeps you sane in these trying endless days? Mm. Um, uh, I'm really struggling with what's happening. Under the best of circumstances, still a transition and this is a new way of life. It helps me to just let myself feel whatever I'm feeling. I'm in a position right now where if I want to nap for 10 hours, um, which I think I'm just describing depression, but if I want to do that, um, it pretty much doesn't matter. So I'm trying to let myself enjoy that. You know, I'm done with whatever Shakespeare wrote, King Lear, I don't care. King Lear is a bad play. Um, no, that's not what I'm saying. These are extraordinary circumstances, and so I'm just trying to take off any pressure on myself um, to be productive or creative or do anything other than stay healthy and um, whatever, you know, work I have to do. Also, Nancy Myers movies. I've, I mentioned her before. Um, very comforting, just pure escapism, just, Turtlenecks on the beach. What could be better? Thank you for your questions. This was fun. Thank you, Sorjo. Bye.